music, video games, books, television. They are the five families of media. But we are the family that talks about it. This is Multimedia Mafia. It's Wednesday. It's another episode of Multimedia Mafia. Hello, everybody. Welcome. You're you're now tuned in to a brand new episode of Multimedia Mafia. I am the Don the Desk. I'm Anthony. Joining me in the booth tonight, to my right, I got the Roadblock, fresh from his trip from Puerto Rico. How you doing, Block? Hey, yo, yo. What's going on, everybody? And across from me, behind the glass, is my little sister, the bitch. No, sorry, the beans. Hello. Good morning. Or afternoon. Or good evening. Don't be timist. We don't know when people identify as. Good day or <laughs> night. Good. <laughs> Just good. good. Just, Just good. good. <laughs> Today we're talking about comedy and music. Two things that go together like peanut butter and jelly. They, they, you know, it, it, when like you, music is like an art form, right? And people love to write about their feelings and how the music can transport them to a different place and transport their listeners to a different place. And comedy music does the same thing, and it makes you fucking laugh. And I love comedy music, and we're going to be talking about some of our favorites on tonight's episode of Multimedia Mafia. Now, I normally kick it over to the Beans to go first because she's right in front of me, and it's kind of like a habit of mine. But in this case, I'm going to kick it to my right, to my heterosexual life mate, Joshua. What do you got for me? Give me a band or a musician, a comedy act that focuses on music. Well, I'll tell you that my pick for this week is going to be Steel Panther. My pants just got short. And that's pretty much half of their songs. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, I can talk more specifically uh, about their one album, which I believe is called... I don't know. <laughs> I know where it is. I know the song names. Look at the top of the tab. Just... Like, there's that, oh, yeah, that's right. That is the name. Ah, I got it mixed up. You know what's confusing about Steel Panther? What? They've technically had like four different names. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've, they've that, that, that's why I can't even, like, yeah, I can't even pinpoint half the time. But the one I'm talking about specifically is Feel the Steel. I love that album. Yes. So, I mean, just a quick little backdrop for people. Like, they've also been known as Metal Shop, which was from the year 2000 to 2003. Uh, Danger Kitty? Um, <laughs> just for 2003, apparently, and then Metal School from 2003 to 2008. Yeah, which is why it's really confusing. Which I don't even know half the time which to refer to them as. I say Steel Panther because that's how I have them in my phone anyway. So, uh, you know, I knew a, I knew a hooker once who once referred to her pussy as a danger kitty because you have no idea if you're going to come out of there alive. Anyway, Feel I the openly Steel. openly disrespect you. <laughs> Feel the Steel is an album that came out by Steel Panther. It was released in uh, June 8th, 2009. Um, the genre is actually listed as glam metal, heavy metal, um, and comedy rock. Right. So for me, I chose them because a lot of their stuff is fucking hysterical to me. Um, there is one song which I don't believe is on the album Feel the Steel. I believe it's on a different album. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. it uh, actually, I think you introduced me to the music video the one day, and I lost my shit. Do you remember? I think it was the one where like a giant set of balls just fell out of the sky. Yes. I can't remember the name. Um, of that <laughs> shit. But I saw that music video, and like ever since then, I've just been stuck on Steel Panther because they're fucking hysterical to me. For that uh, was Pussy Whipped. It is Pussy Whipped. Okay. That was right. off of the All You Can Eat album. <laughs> oh, my God. Them. That music video alone was fucking hysterical. Yeah, it's just nuts. Um, but I actually have most of the songs from Feel the Steel. You know, the Deftall Metal, the Asian Hooker, Community Property, which I lose my shit every time I listen to. <laughs> um, fat Girl, Eating Ain't Cheating, I Party mean, Community Property is kind of the way you live your life. I I, you know, I can't even get mad because I think you're kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, to me, it was like they do live up to the old school, like, glam rock, like, hair metal and stuff like that. But, like, their lyrics are just fucking hysterical in more than half of their songs. It really is. I can't get over it sometimes. I have to lower it while I'm at work because I, <laughs> I do play music while I'm working. So I have to lower it every time one of their songs come on. 
<laughs> that it is. It's it's wonderful that Steel Panther, like, it, it's one thing to just write a song for the sake of comedy, but their songs are like really well written too, and they're kind of like I'm not saying they're brilliant, but like there's some smart lyric choices that make up their songs, and they're just. It's it just they live up to everything that you think the eighties were. Like oh, hookers, yeah, blow, rock and roll, glam, sex, all of it. Yeah, it was kind of fucked up. What it, one of my favorites actually is Asian Hooker because it's just so fucked up. Like don't get me wrong, I re- I respect people, but I also hate everyone equally. It's kind of a weird little thing I got going on. Sure. <laughs> God damn. But for some reason That's a healthy way to live your life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> um Okay, when I meet someone for the first time face to face, I respect everyone equally. But as a broad general term, with like when you just it comes hate to humanity, music, yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How long have you idolized Hitler? Okay, I have not. Uh, let's not go there. Yeah, please not. <laughs> that is not how I wanted this segment to go. Thank you. <laughs> um, fun fact: If anybody uh, doesn't know, um, still uh, feel the steel is actually one of my favorites. Um, because in the live version of Death to All But Metal, um, they actually had Corey Taylor on it. And if I'm correct, where is it? Turn Out the Lights, which is another funny song to me, um, actually has M. Shadows on it. Mm. Did you know that? M. Yes, Shadows can get it all day. <laughs> Yo, for M. Shadows real. is so fine. Oh, yes. my God. Yes. <laughs> um, mm. So for me, like that's definitely my top pick. Um, I'm not sure how you want to approach it, but, you know, like I said, I gave some of the facts on them. Uh, there are five different fucking name changes for whatever reason. And it really sticks to our subject tonight. So uh, Yeah. I mean, Death to All But Metal is a great track, and so is uh, Party All Night, Fuck All... I'm sorry, Party All Day, Fuck All Night. Yes. But one of the ones that I absolutely love that's a real banger of a song, mm. Not even that, it's not even funny, it's Eyes of a Panther... Is a fucking great heavy like metal track. I think I actually have to go back and re-listen to that one only for the fact that for some reason I'm missing two or three tracks on my phone for some reason. Oh, dude, I think I that's will, one of them. I will download them I even for you. Ha- They're amazing. Because I even have Hell's on Fire on my phone, but I think Eyes <laughs> of a Panther is one of the ones I'm missing. Like, isn't that the be- like? It's just it's a simplicity of just like there's a song called Hell's on Fire, and everyone oh, just yeah. went, "Yep, it sure is." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all it is. Like, I think it's hysterical. The lyrics come together really well. So, have you read? I mean, read. Have you listened to all of Steel Panther's albums? I've heard different songs here and there. I haven't actually like sat down and looked through all of their albums yet. Because I think the further you go, uh, th- the worse they kind of get. Are you talking uh, about before or after? <laughs> no, but like, like they push the limit every single time. Um, Every, with with every new album, there's five albums all together. Yeah, right. And like, I thought for sure by the third album, which is uh, all you can eat, like they would have been like, okay, that's it. Like, how fucked up? How much more fucked up can you get? Because on that album, there's a song called Bukake Tears." Oh my god! And "Gang Bang at the Old Folks Home." And of course, one of my favorite music videos ever is "Glory Hole." I gotta say, I think that was one of the last ones I did hear from them. "Glory Hole." If you're not familiar with it is fucking hysterical it is hyster- like there's every, it makes fun of every religion it makes fun of it's just like there's jesus going to a glory hole and he comes out wiping his mouth and i'm just like oh no oh no <laughs> see a person like me who's an atheist finds that fucking hysterical i'm just saying yeah i know i, I know. don't i don't fuck with that shit in the words of great eric over there <laughs> like on the last album there's only 10 uh, there's only 10 tracks and like one of the one is what we call "All I Want to Do Is Fuck Myself Tonight," which is a great track. Uh, and then there's one song that makes me think of you called "Fuck Everybody." Yeah. And then there's "Gods of Pussy." Like every single album they put out just kind of pushes, you know, pushes the limit a little bit further. Well, that's good. Like I said, I haven't had the chance to sit down and listen to everything, but "Feel the Steel" is definitely my top pick, and I love that one. You should. Can I tell you a funny little story about Steel Panther? Sure. We went and we saw, uh, me, Joey, and Dad went and saw Judas Priest a couple years ago. And Steel Panther opened for them. Ooh. And they are absolutely every single thing that they are um, from the album. Like, there, there's no... Like, they live that lifestyle. Like, it is an act, but when they're on stage, 
they are truly living that lifestyle. Like they're pointing out people from the audience, and 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 the lead singer pointed to one chick. He's like, hey. hey I want to fuck you, and then you can clean my room. And then he looked at the other band. Like, this is fine. She's Mexican. She'll be. She's used to it. Oh, shit. I was like, Oh no, dear God. <laughs> and then fucked in the head, man. Lexi looked at where he goes. I you you. I want you. And everyone's like, they stopped playing. Like, dude, that's a guy. He went, Oh. <laughs> and then they just kept playing along. Like, oh yeah, that's something he does all the time. Pretty much. I think it's that's, fantastic. I think that sounds about right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, yeah, Steel Panther is all about comedy, so thank you for that pick. You are welcome. Thank sir. you. We're going to take a very short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to hear Teresa's pick when, when it comes to her comedy musical album person thing. Be back. Hello. Hola. Konnichiwa. I have a very important question for you. Is this real? That's the motto of our weekly podcast. We question everything from the paranormal to conspiracies even the extraterrestrials. There's no topic we won't dive into. So tune in and listen to our show every Sunday at 8 p.m. And remember, folks, question everything. Welcome back to Multimedia Mafia. We're talking about music and comedy on tonight's episode. We just got done with Josh's segment about Steel Panther, heavy metal glam band that goes all out, goes ball to the wall. They're funny as fuck. Go check them out. Wherever you listen to music, you're definitely going to have a laugh, especially if you like raunchy humor. I'm going to now turn my attention to the Beans. Beans, what do you got for me? What is a musical comedy thing that is your pick? So um, I'm going to be talking about Stephen Lynch. Um, Stephen Lynch is a uh, com comedic musician, I guess that's how you would say it. Um that I was actually introduced to by you, Anthony, when I was like five or six years old. Which is the appropriate age. I think even, <laughs> even younger than that. My earliest memories of Stephen Lynch, I don't even remember how old I was, but I remember it clear as day. It was me, you, Joey, and I think Ramon was over. And we were eating lunch, and you got this new DVD that you wanted everyone to watch. You wanted to watch it with everyone. Stephen King live at the Stephen L. King? Ray. Sorry, Stephen Lynch. <laughs> Wrong episode. Wrong Sorry. season, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was last season. Stephen Lynch live at the El Rey. Yes. Um, which was, was shot in 2004. So I, it must have been around that time. I was fucking four years old. You're welcome. Um, but I remember watching it, and the song that stuck out to me was, um, for whatever reason, it was Grandfather. <laughs> that song stuck in my head. And if no one knows what the song is about... Now, before I get into that, Stephen Lynch is, as you said before, like, uh, uh, you mentioned the word raunchy, and that's yes. all I can really say. Raunchy and inappropriate as fuck. Yes, it is. Yes, it um, is. Stephen Lynch is, Stephen Lynch is just, I, there's no other way to describe it other than raunchy. He talks about, like, really, really fucked up shit that no one ever talks about in public. Um... So Grandfather is a song about his grandfather. Now, I don't know if any of this is fictitious or surreal. I don't know. But it's a song about his grandfather, how he's dying, and how he wants him to die so he can get in his, his inheritance. <laughs> so literally, it's like grandfather die. Like, it's literally a song about his. he wants his grandfather to die so he can get money. It's so <laughs> fucked up. And that's a song that really stuck out to me. So... um. And then you have like other ones like Best Friend Song. I forget who the guy was. Um, Mark Tyke. Mark Tyke. Um, Best Friend Song, that was a really good one. D and D. Um, Taxi Driver's really fucking funny. Very short, but very funny. Um, and then not and then I guess because I was introduced to it, and then Joey kind of like fell into it. Um, we started listening to other songs that he had done, and one of the other songs that's my favorite song that Stephen Lynch has ever, you know, has, is called Beals, and it's about Satan, and it's just like, it's not good, <laughs> like not good as in like like the song isn't good, but the what it's about is just terrible. Yes. But it's so cute. Like I would never say that. I would never say like, oh, a song about Satan's cute, but like the way he <laughs> sings and just. Oh my god, it's just so good, and he's so funny, and ha like I said, half the most of the shit that he sings about is just 
fucking terrible. It is. You want to know something awesome? I found Stephen Lynch um, when they did a Comedy Central Presents, which was a, usually a, a stand-up, uh, an episode of stand-up comedy. It was a half an hour long, and and he sang four or five songs, and one of them was called Special Ed. Mm -hmm. And this was at a time where it had to be like 2001, 2003, something like that. And I actually recorded it on VHS just so I could watch it over and over and over again because it was so funny to me. And Stephen Lynch was the first comedian that I, it hit the nail on the head for me. Like, I understand the, the rule of the comedian. The job of the comedian is to, is to find the line and then to purposely take his audience with him across that line, right, and push his comedy into territory and make, the, make them uncomfortable to a point but then make them see that it was a good thing to cross that line and the first time i actually experienced that not me personally but first time i understood that lesson was live at the el rey i wanted dad to see it and dad's watching it and the song grandfather came on and at the time papone had just passed away yeah so it now that was it struck the wrong chord that was my father's grandfather Right? Yeah. So I'm expecting that he's going to be like, this is fucking awful. This is just terrible. And dad pissed himself laughing. And at that point, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, because it was in my head, I'm like, all right, just because something affects you in real life, if the joke is written or constructed right, it's going to be funny no matter what it's about. Mm -hmm. Whether you can sit there and go, oh, I see myself in that joke and I take it personally. You can take it personally and get offended, or you can take it personally and see the humor in the joke if it's written right and laugh. And that's what Dad did. Dad laughed his ass off. And I'm thinking, like, I didn't want to fast forward to that song because I didn't want to censor on his behalf. I'm like, if he's not going to like it, he's going to say, I don't like this, and like, turn it off. Yeah. And he didn't. He fucking laughed. And at that point, I'm like, I can be as offensive as I want. It's, it's up to the person who I'm telling the joke to to get mad or yeah not. their perspective yeah but a lot of the songs that he had like that he has written are just like fucked up oh like, special in ed. general <laughs> special, special ed, ed superhero <laughs> superhero i don't think it's fucked up like i think if it wasn't for like if he didn't sing it for like adults i think it would i, I don't remember the song like perfectly but i mean it's just the he. It's an interactive song that he does with the crowd. So that, he yes. asks people, and that becomes a superhero. I'm the superhero of this. I'm a superhero of it's that. It's a very smart song. Yeah, if you're a stand like because it brings the the crowd the crowd to you. To you. But yeah. then on the flip side of that, then you have priest, <laughs> which is just royally fucked up. And the priest, the song priest, is about a Roman Catholic priest who is praying on an altar boy. Not praying as in, Lord, deliver this no, child like to me. No, like, praying on it like... As in he's hunting him. As in he's hunting him down. And he's very descriptive and very specific with this song and the things that these two individuals do together. And it's so fucked up to the point where when I heard this song... And I understood what it meant. I was in Roman Catholic school. You were like so in sixth grade? I was in like sixth grade when I put the pieces together and everything fell into place. And I'm like, holy shit. I can't look at my priest this like that's insane. Um, but he he's very good. But on the flip side of other than his musical comedy is in, you know, Live at the El Ray or any of his other albums. He's also been on Broadway. He played in um, The Wedding Singer as Robbie Hart. Yeah, we touched on that last week. Yeah, and and it's, that's one of my favorite musicals. You also introduced me to that as well. Um, so he's he's very talented, and he's he's very good at what he does. Like you know, he has a very good voice. He makes a lot of jokes about about singing with one ball, and at this point, I believe that he only oh, yeah. has one nut. One thousand percent. That's why he can get like into falsetto range and shit, because he only has one ball. Yeah, like he's very good, and for some reason, he's in in. The part that in as he played Robbie Hart, I could see why they casted him because he does for whatever reason he does remind me of Adam Sandler and he just fits perfectly. But for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the facial structure or the way his he moves his face. He just to me he reminds me of Jim Carrey. Yeah, he they does have, have that. similar facial features, and it's just kind of weird. But um, yeah, so mine was Stephen Lynch. He's, he's very funny. He's 50 now. He's 50. He's 5'11". He's married. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but if 
you have a very light stomach when it comes to sensitive topics, it's not he's not a person for you. That's true. So, you know, if you're go if you're out there and you're gonna listen to Stephen Lynch thinking that, oh, you know, these people are making it up and he's, you know, a light comedic or co co uh, comedian, he's not. He's very fucked up. Like he has a song li that's literally dedicated about trying to ha like cause a, his wife to have a miscarriage. Like it's <laughs> not. It's not for the faint of heart. So Lullaby is another good one where oh. it's a song he's singing to his daughter. And it's all about how daddy's going to go out and do fucked up shit and bring mm -hmm. you home a new mommy. Yeah. It's fucking great. Like, my favorite. What's your favorite one? What's your favorite? What's your favorite? My favorite's Beals. Beals. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, got, I, think, I think a very short one is actually my favorite one. Uh, it's called A Month Dead. And it, just, it seems like a nursery rhyme. And it just, I'll just give you the last bit of it. It's like, She's a month dead and she's starting to smell. But if loving a corpse is a sin, I'll see you in hell. I'm like, that's so cute. There's also cute? another one. That's the word you're going with? Uh, well, cute. love is forever, Josh. Okay. <laughs> There's another one that I actually, I actually found out because when I was in high school, they wouldn't allow us to uh, watch lot of things on YouTube, like on our Chromebooks, a lot of things were blocked. Yeah. For whatever fucking reason, Stephen Lynch, when he was at, uh, when he performed in, it was somewhere in, uh, somewhere in Michigan. Uh, he lives there now. I can't remember what the fucking town is called. Whatever the fuck. He, he sang a song called Fishing Hole. And it's a song about spending quality time with his son going down to the fishing hole. And... It turns into how he's talking about how his kid is an asshole. <laughs> like, like legit an asshole. Then he goes into talking about how his his wife is an asshole. And it's basically a song that's like dad's life. It's just everything is going <laughs> wrong and nothing is going right. And I think what's so incredible about it is that in the last verse, um, damn, where is it? Oh, in the last, like, one of the last verse, or the second to last verse, he goes, so, maybe, hold on. Wait, when I line up, am I better realization kind of, or am I the one to blame? Maybe I just don't say the things I should say, and I, do the, I don't do the things I ought. So I took a good hard look at myself in the mirror, and this is what I thought. The guy who sold me this mirror is an asshole. He's an asshole. Son of a bitch was, said it was antique. He's, he was lying, he was lying, maybe want to punch him in his salesman cheek. Like, He's just, it's everything just turns on him in the song. And I was like, God damn, this is about my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my kid's an asshole. My wife's an asshole. The bar that I went to is closed, so the bar's an asshole. This, like, everybody's an asshole. Fuck these people. I'm not the problem. These people are the problem, and my life isn't going right. So That was off his album, Three Balloons. Yes. and to, uh, me, like, to me, Three Balloons took a, 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 a change for Stephen Lynch. Because he was, it was, it wasn't recorded acoustically, and he had more instruments and stuff, so it wasn't just him and his guitar. And then the last couple albums he put out was, I think, one called Lion, which was released in 2012, and that became that was like very like it was so different than what he put out before. It was very soft, but it's still pretty funny. Uh, it's a very good album. Um, it is. It's just different. Um, and I think he did one more after that, which is escaping me. But um, yeah, it, it's it's different than his earlier stuff. You can see that he's evolving, <laughs> still evolving as a comedian. That and like the last verse is actually something I feel like I'd hear Dad say in like one of his a poem by Joe Kaola. I'm on a real asshole streak. I could open an asshole boutique. <laughs> like that's something Daddy would say. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh. Uh. God. Yeah, Stephen Lynch is great. So good. But yeah, All that's right. me. Excellent. We're going to take a short commercial break, come back, talk about our next segment. Stick around. Are you looking for a vinyl LP or a cassette tape? 45 RPM? If so, you've come to the right place. Golden Space. We have thousands of titles in stock and ready to ship. Call us at 862-336-2275 or go to our store at discogs.com backslash seller, backslash golden spins, backslash profile. We can find whatever you may need. We proudly accept PayPal and every major credit card. And we are back. This is Multimedia Mafia. I'm the down to desk Anthony. I got the roadblock tonight's episode. 
I got the beans on tonight's episode, and we're talking about music comedy, and it's my turn to talk about one of my favorite comedians who sings and plays instruments, and that is Mr. Bo Burnham. Now, Bo Burnham, to me, Bo Burnham is one of those guys who is like, he's so, he's almost too smart. And I say that because he's been performing since he's been like 19 years old. Like, I think he started putting up YouTube videos at like 16, but started like doing stand up specials at like 19, 20. Like, a very, very, got to start very early on in life. Yeah. Which is something that I'm like, you don't see that too often. Like, like that to me, I'm like, that guy's gifted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's one thing to go out on the road and to tour as a comedian. And you could spend 10, 15, 20 years on the road just doing small clubs and growing your name. And then you become like you get your big break. And then there's people like Bo Burnham who like got famous real quick and was like doing stand up specials and now has released, I think, three or four of them. And they're just like really smart and funny and thoughtful and dark and hysterical. And it makes you think. I think he found like the best way to present himself and that's why it took off so easily especially on YouTube yeah because I think he did something that other I guess regular comedians didn't do yep or wouldn't take advantage of and that's throwing yourself on YouTube throwing yourself on any kind of a platform that can get you to reach more people at a quicker rate than it would going to bar to bar or theater to theater, theater, you know, so forth. I agree with you 100%. Like, his first full-length album was Bo Burnham, and that was, like, 18 years old. And then his second album, Words, 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 like, it's all based off of, like, thought and comedy yeah. and, and, and the English language. And the man is just, he doesn't, like, he didn't stop for a long time and then he did that one called Make Happy, which was okay. You know, I, I liked it. I thought what? Like, that was his special what? That was good. And then we didn't hear from him for a while. And then just at the beginning of this year, he dropped um, Inside. And everyone stopped and watched this and was like, oh, my God, bro, just came out with a new special. Let me check this out. And then was like, after they got done watching it, they were like, is he okay? No, he's not. <laughs> Seriously. He really, like, and every single one of those fucking songs off of Inside has been a TikTok trend. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Bezos was a TikTok trend. Bitch. Welcome Don't even get me fucking started. Go on. Get get started. Vroom, no, vroom. No, go get, continue your segment. Welcome to the Internet is one of my absolute fucking favorite songs, and it fucks with my head every time I hear it. Like, I could see a music video in my head for it. And not just the one he like he's playing on the the keyboard and singing. Yeah. I can see like a, a, a carnival barker with a show tent and and just like someone talking to a crowd of people and just like come on, welcome to the internet. Like it is crazy how smart and and, and insane that song really is. Um, well, you also got to go back to some of his earlier stuff because some a lot of his earlier stuff. If you don't have like your IQ isn't good enough, you will, you actually won't understand half of what he says. Mm -mm. I at like, least yeah. in my opinion, I don't think it's a case of you know what it is. It's not about IQ. I think if it's if if it, it is because stupid people don't laugh at it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give you that. Like you can just put Bo Burnham in front of two people, and one person gonna go, "That's how's that funny." Exactly. And another person's going to go, holy shit. Like, mm -hmm. and they read so deep into it. Yeah. And His middle name is Pickering. That and he's 6'6". Six, six. Explains everything. I didn't know that. His middle Damn. name is Pickering, and he's 6'6". Six, six. Damn. Yeah, well, like, one of his songs, I think it was uh, New oh. Math. I think I must have listened to that song, like, ten times in a row. Because I wanted to keep understanding every single segment of the song. And I think it's genius the way he put that song together. I actually bought his book, which is a book of poetry called Egghead. Some of the stuff in there, I'm like, that's funny. That's smart. That's interesting. And then other stuff is so irrelevant and strange. I'm like, I have no idea even how to begin to understand yeah, this poem. It's like, it's not even that. It's with his songs, too. It's, it's, I don't know. They're like perfectly crafted. Yeah, I think he, he's so hard on him, which is why I think he started getting panic attacks. Because he, so, he was so hard on himself to make sure that everything was perfect 
that when you get when you get that obsessed with your shit, you get neurotic, and you start breaking down a little bit. He's I like, mean, the ugh. song. One of the things I love is a song uh, from God's perspective. Yes, and, and like the the line that kills it every time is like, "You can eat pork because why would I give a shit? I created the world. You think I'm drawing the line at the, the fucking, fucking deli aisle? aisle? Yeah." And then the left brain, right brain song. Oh my god, it is so smart and funny and just enjoyable. And you, see, everyone knows that fact. Like you know, the left brain does this, the right brain does that. The different halves of your brain are responsible for different things. And then he just personifies them and makes them argue and brings those characters to life in a very real kind of way. <laughs> in, in, in the what uh, stand-up, he went into the poem of I fuck sluts, and he went, sluts, sluts, and then someone went, woo! And he was like, it's not a roll call, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, the one song, I listen to it a lot, uh, off of Inside, is um, All Eyes on Me. Um, and that's that TikTok song. It's it, it's it goes like, um, get your fucking hands up. Yeah. See the oceans rising like I give a shit. Yeah, I listen to that song so much, and depending on my mood, it fucks with me. Like if I'm happy and I start singing that song, it gets me kind of like pumped. Like I'm like, get your fucking hands up. But if I'm in a sad mode. It brings me down. Like, it's weird how that song affects you based yeah, on what mood you're based in. based on how you're feeling. Because when me and Joey were, when me and Joey watched Inside, it was out already for, like, maybe two or three weeks. And I kept hearing it on TikTok. I'm like, I gotta watch it. I yeah. like Bo Burnham. I'm like, let's watch it. So we sit down, we watch it. And we're talking, and we're like, is he okay? Like, it's not one of those things where you're like, oh, this is so funny. It's like, holy fucking shit. What is going on? Is he all right? Like, yeah. someone needs to text him and just ask him <laughs> how if he's okay. How the world works is so funny and fucked up. And the fact that he's just doing it with a sock on his hand. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to that sock. And the sock is, like, talking about how evil things, like, the world really works. Pedophilic, corp, you know, pedophiles and they pr they're protected by the police and all that shit. And he's like, aren't you fucking listening? We are engaged. He's like, no, I can't go back. My favorite one is Problematic. That's a good song. That's a like, funny video, the too. The first, like, the first, like, three lines are just, I don't know, the first, like, two verses. And then he goes into uh, how he wore the Aladdin costume. The Aladdin costume. It's like. Should it's, I burn it? Oh, no, not burn it. <laughs> what should I do with it? It's so funny. But Unpaid Intern, although it's short, I love, like, it's the, hard to skip that song. It's so hard. I love like the I guess the '30s like wah, 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 yeah, wah, wah. like the big brass band kind of song to it. It's so good. Yeah, it's so fucking good. I don't understand why the Bezos songs are so popular. Oh my god, I love that song. It's it. I don't know. It's just something about them that are like addictive. Like I don't know what he puts in them, or I don't. I don't know. They're just so so good. But oh, so good. Yeah. I love Bo. I, I Bo is Bo's good. Bo's great. I love Bo Burnham, and he's one of those comedians. I'm like he's 32, 31. So you sit there, go. I can only imagine what's down the line for him. Like we get to, if he doesn't off himself, of course, we're gonna hopefully. No, don't ever say that. Well, you never know what these he Hollywood types. He has a types. girlfriend. That's I didn't know he had a girlfriend. So? I thought he was single. There's been a lot of people with His girlfriends, girlfriends who killed themselves. Like. 12 years older than him. Suicide knows no relationships. We do not... You're problematic. We do not advocate suicide on no, this. No, he's an asshole. A difference. On this, uh, he's, this program. He's problematic. Well, it's one of those things like he started young and we're just like, he's only 30, whatever, 31, 32. And I'm like, I hope, I hope he pumps out like two albums every f five years. You know what I mean? Just like... I, I'm interested in to see where his career is going to wind up going. And I get excited for that because it's like, if he's this good now, imagine what he's going to pump out two years from now, five years from now. You know what I mean? So, Bo Burnham is one of the funniest comedians I know. And I love Bo. And I just, I can fuck with Bo all day. Uh, let me, I'm going to start just talking about some other, some other uh, singing comedians because they do, they, you know, it may not be our picks right here but like they they have their place like someone like steve martin does anyone understand how funny fucking steve martin really is 
married with a donkey. The King Tut song is like his iconic thing. Josh, you know how funny Steve Martin is, right? Yes. He's my favorite. What is it? He's honky. my favorite honky King Tut. I love that video. Uh, and you know, like it's it goes beyond like just musical comedy. You do know that he is like a legitimate singer and musician he put out a i mean he's been playing his whole life he plays banjo um and he plays like bluegrass music he's so unproblematic yeah he's very it's like, like he's wholesome steve he is steve martin is so wholesome and he's like everyone's favorite grandfather yeah yeah like he's just ew what was that yeah yeah what the fuck was that I mean, yes i was agreeing with you fuck don't off. agree with me okay like ew He's, uh, I love Steve Martin. He's just so awesome. Yeah, Steve Martin is one of those guys where you sit there and go, oh, he's just an actor. And then, like, oh, you didn't realize how much he's done. Because he is so much more than just an actor. He's a fucking prolific writer. He's written, like, I can't even, I can't even tell you how many screenplays he's done. He was in a relationship with Bernadette Peters. Holy well, shit. He's also written, like, plays. He wrote a musical that was on Broadway. He dated Mary to Mary Tyler Moore too. He's a he's a man say who's who just Mary, Mary Tyler, Tyler Moore. Moore. Yeah, yeah uh, it just asked who say who now. She's an actor, actress. You don't know who Mary, Mary Tyler Moore is? Uh, not offhand. Uh, oh, okay. The name doesn't ring a bell. Sorry. Okay. She's she was a big actress in the what sixties and seventies. Seventies mm, yeah. mainly. She had a, like her own. Show. She was on the Dick Van Dyke Show, and then she had. The Mary Tyler Moore show, which was like a program during the day. But she was an actress, too. But he was in a relationship with Bernadette Peters, who he starred in The Jerk and Pennies from Heaven. And mm -hmm. then he dated Mary Tyler Moore. Yep. He released his own in 2009. So in 2009, he's already like in his 60s. And that's when he drops his first fucking... Like his final comedy album was the Steve Martin Brothers, and that was 1981. And then he dropped his first album, solo album... In 2009, called The Crow, uh, new songs for the five string banjo. And he's toured with the Steep Canyon Ra Rangers. Like, the man, like, li like he's a legit bluegrass artist. On top of being one of the funniest men in show business, on top of being a part of Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. as uh, you know, a writer for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour back in the 60s, on top of being. Uh, a, you know, a, a successful actor in movies like The Jerk, Bride, The Father of the Bride, uh, Little Shop of Horrors, which if I were to pick one song to be an audition song, it would be Dentist mm -hmm. from Little Shop of Horrors for just me personally because it's, he, he, it's a sadistic character and I can vibe with that. I can understand that kind of character. And I just love, like Steve Martin can do fucking anything and everything. He has tinnitus. Oh. Just saying. He suffered from tinnitus since filming the pistol shooting scene in Three Amigos in 1986. Okay. That sucks. Tinnitus yeah. is horrible. Do you have tinnitus? Everyone has tinnitus. What? Everyone has normal tinnitus, which is like the ringing in the ear. If you have that at all, you know, every so often. But actual, like, severe tinnitus is like when you hear... When you hear something with no corresponding sound in reality, oh. and it's like constant, when your ears are constantly ringing and chiming and... What about voices? That's therapy. Okay, just wanted to make sure. That's uh, yeah. schizophrenia. Seriously. Mm -hmm. So get some help, but... Oh, all right, well, let's shift to another wonderful singing comedian. Adam Sandler. Okay, you bring up Adam Sandler. He was on my to don't list. Uh, Why? We already had a whole episode dedicated to Adam Sandler. Okay, so then pick somebody else. Well, since you mentioned him, Adam Sandler. I mean, we all know the Hanukkah song. We all know that he was Opera Man. We all know that he sings that wonderful little song at the end of the Wedding Singer. He can get it. Okay. Uh, he can. Okay. He like young Adam Sandler. Ooh. Chef's kiss. Like Happy Gilmore Adam Sandler? Like SNL Adam Sandler. Does okay, maybe it's just weird or maybe I don't know. Does Pete Davidson now yes. give off that same vibe no. as young Adam Sandler? No, Pete Davidson Pete I, I Pete Davidson would just have to look at me and my bra would pop off. That man is so fucking hot. Listen, you horny bitch. By I the need way, you to focus. I love you, Isaiah. I see him and then like all I think is 
crack at it. How the fuck did you find him attractive? Pete Davidson is so adorable. Besides that, I had this feeling when I watched Pete Davidson that he is the second coming of Adam Sandler plus meth. Like, I just see him as... I don't even think he does drugs. Oh, no, he did a lot of drugs. I know he's also mentally... He's got mental issues, but, like, I see Pete Davidson. I'm like, he's, like... He's just as talented and funny and the same, like, vibe as Adam Sandler, just more fucked up. And the fact that he lost his dad on 9-11. He dated Kate Beckinsale. Who? Pete Davidson. Like, for a long time. Good for him. Right? Good for fucking him. He's so cute. Oh, my yeah. God. Anyway, Adam Sandler's a great... He, see, he, he knows how to play guitar and he sings a lot. And, and Kaya Gerber? Uh, did he you, dated Kaya Gerber. Kaya Gerber? Kaya Gerber is... Um, Isn't that like a spell from Harry Potter? No, Kaya Gerber is <laughs> someone's mother. Or some, Cindy Crawford's a daughter. Okay, good for her. Sorry, I'm just like going through his dating history. Like, okay, right. everyone, whether you're Jewish or not, you know the Hanukkah song by Adam Sandler. And that's one of those things that's, that to me shows you, like, shows me like how successful someone can be. When they're not even in that culture and you know something from that culture because they've made it that big. So I give Adam Sandler props for that. So, uh, what else? Can you think of another singing singing kind of person? Because I got like five more to talk about. Go on. I'll bring up Bob Saget. He sings? Bob Saget at the end of his stand-up specials brings out a guitar and sings on stage. And one of the songs that I absolutely love that Bob Saget sings is My Dog Licked My Balls. Because Bob Saget, <laughs> Bob Saget made a hard 180 from the fucking Full House show. He's nothing like Danny Tanner. And that's what I love because he's like, well, everyone's going to be expecting that. So if I don't do anything like that, I'll put my name out there. It did catch me by surprise when I saw that when, Yeah, you first see it, you're like, what the fuck? Like there's one song called The Donkey on Full House. <laughs> the old English folk song's a good one. Like, there's a lot of songs that Bob Saget sings at the end. But it's not like he's, like, making it, like, his whole act. It's just, you know, a little funny thing he does at the end of his shows. One of the big ones is um, uh, a song about sharding, and that's funny as hell. Like, he's fucking great. I love Bob Saget. He makes me uncomfortable. Yes, that's the whole point of his whole act. Okay, moving on from Bob Saget, let's go with someone a little bit more wholesome. Mr. Wayne Brady. I love Wayne Brady. Wait, Wayne Brady sings? Dude, don't you remember whose line is anyway? Nope. Vaguely. I only I think I only watched a couple episodes that he was on other than that. Oh, really. I, old, old, old whose line is anyway. When it was still hosted by Drew Carey, mm -hmm. he would be the go-to guy anytime there was a singing challenge or a singing game. He would be the one to sing, no matter what. Whether it was the infomercial one where they, you know, here's a new record from compilation album he would be in charge of singing like wayne brady is a legit singer i mean he's also done a lot of other stuff obviously he was in hamilton yes he was yes he was and he also does you know don't stop or what is what's that song what's that show don't forget the lyrics don't forget the lyrics um i don't think he's put out yes he he's actually has two albums out one happened in 08 and then another one 2011 so like wayne brady legitimate artist not that he's like i don't think he's comedy music but when he was doing whose line is it anyway that was all comedy so wayne brady definitely gets it and you know who else i have to give it to too jimmy fallon i think jimmy fallon when he does those musical skits knocks it out of the park when he did um heart of gold the man was fantastic like Jimmy Fallon is not everyone's cup of tea, um, and I understand that. But when he does his musical bits, the man is funny as hell. So I give it to Jimmy Fallon as well. He's in the same vein. And I'm building up to my last. I have three more to talk about, and I'm building up. The next one, again, S Saturday Night Live band, The Lonely Island. Yeah. Andy Samberg and Jizzed in my pants. Jorma Tacone and Akiva Schaefer. What the fuck did you just say to me? Yeah, what the hell did you just call me? Those are the guy's names. <laughs> the lo like the Lonely Island is <sighs> Dick in a Box went everywhere. 
jizzed in my pants, went everywhere. I think um, I had those on my phone for like the longest time too. Yeah, like everyone, everyone saw them, and they laughed, and then they like they're like they need something from like, um, if they need something musical, they were like, yeah, let's do that. And Lonely Island was the first one there when they did Captain Jack Spar- Sparrow. Oh, that was a good one. I loved it so fucking much. And then of course I'm on a boat, and like a boss, and who can forget I just had sex. <laughs> I just had sex. You know, it was fucked up. I pissed off a couple of exes by playing that right after I had sex. And then you have Mother Lover. <laughs> oh yeah, fantastic. Just, they're just so funny, and they put out albums too. So not so it's born from like you know the satire or whatever. It's born from the SNL skit, and then they just kept it going, and now it's like comedy gold. So I absolutely love them. They're funny as fuck. Moving on. And I'm going to combine both of these guys into one and under their stage name, Tenacious D. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can't talk about music comedy and not mention Tenacious fucking D. Jack Black is... Jack Black is just Jack Black. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only way to fucking... That's the only way to describe it. Like, Jack Black is just Jack Black. He's an enigma. And then, of course, um, you have Kyle Gass... Who's always to me like the rock. Like he's always there mm-hmm. backing up Jack Black. Yeah. And I don't care what anyone says, The Pick of Destiny is one of my favorite movies. I understand like it's not a great movie, but it's just one of my personal favorite fucking films. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. A lot of their songs on the um off of from the movie alone were fucking hysterical. Oh yeah. And the fact that they are always fucking with, you know, David Grohl and Dio and, and all the you know, all the guests that they've had on their you know on their albums and they've collaborated with yeah it's funny shit and it's just great shit like the pick of destiny is just a great album and it's a funny ass album and i don't care if it was a box office bomb the songs the story it's just so fucking good and now the now the last one i gotta mention on tonight's episode the king of the parody songs Mr. Weird Al Yankovic. I love Weird Al Yankovic. Cricket. <laughs> I don't care if you cricket or not. Weird Al Yankovic is the shit. He makes me uncomfortable, too. He has been... He is 61 years old, and he has been active since 1976. Can we just understand that for one second? He has been around for 40 fucking years. That's Weird Al Yankovic. And he has a song that you can use in almost every situation. Like, and he and he hasn't stopped at all. And he just keeps fucking around with the polka noise, uh, the polka music and shit like that. But, like, from his earliest Dr. Demento shit to now, the man just doesn't stop. And he is so, what do you call it? He's respected because he was like one of the first guys like, no, I'm going to do this as parody. I'm just going to take existing songs and fuck with them. And then just like, you're either going to love it or hate it. Yeah, like Amish Paradise. That's Ex- like the biggest one I know of. Exactly. Or, or, I mean, shit, there's so many. There's so many out there. Um, trapped, in the, tra- trapped in the drive-thru, <laughs> which was, you know, trapped in a closet. You know, um, I'm fat, eat it, eBay. eBay was a parody of uh, I want it that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the man just the man just has, like, great musical talent. Um, there was one about Star Wars he did based off of American Pie, um, which was I, fantastic. I don't know that one. Yeah. It's, it's all about, like, the Phantom Menace and shit. And it's it's like it starts with a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away. Well, I'll have to check it out later. <laughs> it is. It's 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 funny as hell. Um, and he just he hasn't stopped, and I love that. Like he did a song called uh, "Parody of Complicated" by Avril Lavigne. He did a parody of "Lose Yourself" called "Couch Potato." Like if it exists, he's touched it in some way, shape, or form. And I just you got to give respect to somebody who just knows what they're good at, and they just keep doing that thing over and over and over again. 
He just stays in his lane and he doesn't move and he just keeps racking up money and albums. Like Amish Paradise legit is one of the funniest shit I've ever heard in my life. And I piss myself every time I hear it. Definitely. It's one of the funniest ones. At least for me anyway. I've heard a whole bunch. I've seen the uh eat it, you know, I'm fat, all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. Um didn't he do one for Smooth Criminal or am I crazy? I feel um, like he might have done one, mm. or unless I'm confusing him with somebody else that did Smooth Criminal. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. There's so many that Weird Al has done over his 40-plus year career. It's really, I don't know them all. But I do know the one that always makes me smile is The Night Santa Went Crazy. <laughs> what? Teresa George's I think that's the song that I'm actually looking for right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's actually, in the original style... Um, of Black Gold by Soul Asylum. And the intro is very similar to Zach Wilde's intro to Mama, I'm Coming Home by Ozzy Osbourne. But The Night Santa Went Crazy is not so much a parody. It's just, it's a song that he wrote. And, whoo, Nelly. It is a demonic song. And it's one of my favorite Christmas songs. The two, the two songs that Weird Al that uh, I used to listen to when I was like a very yo- like very young like I'm talking like I had like the tiny little blue MP3 player like that small um, is this Night Santa Went Crazy and the Barbie Girl parody yeah. Ugly Girl those two songs for whatever reason just stuck out to me a lot and I listened to them on repeat for whatever reason yeah and like he's got like um what do you call it, Uh, the Essential Weird Al album, where it compiles like 40 of his biggest hits or something like that, 40, 50 songs. And they're just like, you just keep laughing from one to the next to the next to the next. Like, I don't think Weird Al ever gets the praise that he really deserves. But like Weird Al is funny and he's he's, he's comedy personified. And I can't uh, I can't imagine a world without Weird Al Yankovic. Do you agree? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he started it all, at least for me in my mind. Not he really. started it all, so. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, I'm saying I don't agree with you because, like, whether he's here or he's not, he doesn't make a difference to me, but that's just me. You go to hell and you die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. This has been a fun episode. This has been our episode on comedy and music. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I, I hope you guys tune in next week. We're going to talk about another uh, aspect from our season of music. Um, I'm not sure what next week's show is just yet, but it's definitely planned out and, uh, just tune in next week. So we'll both be surprised. I see you over there, Joey, sneaking around. Anyway, it makes me want to murder him. Block, thank you for joining me on this episode. Beansy, thank you for joining me on this episode. Absolutely. Check out our website, greenhourmedia.org. Check out our sister podcast, Is This Real? Check us out. Listen, subscribe. We have a Patreon, which Joey is in the process of getting more shit up. That is Patreon-exclusive shit. If you want to rep us by, by buying a mug or a hat, check out our Etsy store. We have some cool stuff there. We have the great Roblox on. His nipples are on that cup. That's definitely a collector's Would you item. Stop focusing on that. I have that cup. But they are. Your nipples are on that cup. I, it, it's my whole upper body, all right? I'm fucking shirtless. Just say it's the Roblox on mug. That's all you have to say. The Roblox nipple mug is available through Etsy. <laughs> Check us out. There's a new episode every single Wednesday. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Next, um,. Check out our Is This Real podcast. They dropped a, they're dropping a special episode, 8 o'clock, about 9-11. That's this week's episode, so it's a double episode. It's like two hours long, so enjoy that shit. I will check you guys out on, a, on next time right here on Multimedia Mafia. If you're thinking about checking out another podcast, forget about it. See you later.